<clears throat> I forgot to actually boot up Stellaris before I actually started the stream. So, give me two seconds. <laughs> I won't take a second, thankfully, because of my very beastly computer scene, screen, computer setup. Yes. <clears throat> but yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to continue this absolutely fantastic, this epic saga of which we left a cliffhanger in the last episode. Sup, ooh, hello, JH, good to see you, as usual. Sup, B, it's Chad Warden here. Good to see you, mate. Jeremiah, great to see you as well. Let's go, blessed Sunday morning here at my place. Absolutely blessed Sunday morning. A blessed Lord's Day to all of you for whoever's on this side of the planet. It is indeed the Lord's Day today, and I do intend to celebrate it, ladies and gentlemen, both with the communion of the saints, hopefully, because uh, my because uh, some mates booked a... We booked, we booked out this place called Outback Steakhouse. It's self-explanatory. It's really, really good. But they booked it at a time when I'd be going to my church in the city. So uh, whether I'll be able to go today or not is an open question. But otherwise, I'm going to supplement it another way, if not, by listening to a sermon, perhaps from Apology, Apologia Church, um, doing my own personal devotional stuff, which is, of course, not a replacement for church, not at all. But it, uh, well, it, it can be in like an exceptional day. But yes, otherwise, oh man, this game is, why is this taking so long to load? Why? <laughs> oh well, oh well. Andrew, good to see you, my man. Outback is so good. Do y'all have Texas Roadhouse? No, we don't. I don't know what Texas Roadhouse is. But uh, hey, it's Texas. And if it has to do with steak, then it's probably flipping good. It's probably really, really, really good. But uh, yes, so we've got that. All right, closing my other windows, making everything nice and streamlined. Let's close Steam there. Um, and we are sweet. Okay. So the game <clears throat> should be booting up in just a second. And once it is, then it will appear here. Because um, otherwise, I've got my big black screen here. I'll just, I'll just show you my beautiful face in full size right now while the game is booting up. And I'll put on my uh, apparel. My drip, as the kids these days call it. Gosh, I hate these... Ah, of course it fell. Hang on, hang on. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. Okay, the game should be booted in just a second. All right. Okay. Gaming screen. Is the game up? Almost. Oh, come on. No, the game. Music. Okay. Um, stop. Okay, cool. Because every time when I switch the camera and it goes back to that thing, it plays the intro music again. <laughs> so I was going to manually stop it if it happens. Okay. And... Okay, we're up. Yep, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We all see it nice and clearly. Do tell me if there's any issues, my boys. Salve, Tomne. Salve, Loge. Salve, my good mate. My good friend. Glad to see you here as well. And if, as, as, as usual, if you know anyone who would love this this series or whatever please do send it to them we are live right now it's the perfect time to send it but uh yes ladies and gentlemen so this is where we're at right now we ended with a cliffhanger we just commenced our first true offensive war against our southern neighbors our first war against them did not go well they took these systems the van tandemian system the vartavar system and the Icheon system it was a it was it was a better defeat than I was expecting because normally enemy empires will claim like a ton and then just absolutely cripple your empire if you surrender. But uh, luckily I was able to surrender, give us time to build up, and now we have the upper hand. Now we have the overwhelming fleets compared to them. Um, yes, they keep on building up, but they are at war with another guy as well on the other side. So they simply, uh, at best, they're forced to split up their forces, which will mean less against us. And, uh, yeah, we just got to hope that they'll keep at this war for as long as possible and that these guys deal as much damage to these guys as possible because then that will help us with... Well, they'll, they'll, they'll just help us with everything. Um, I'm going to pull up my phone, actually, so that I can view the live chat as we are playing. Yokundo su teuidiam. Yokundo squides yokundos. Let's pull this up. I've just built, I've, I've, I've done two like graphs on my table here to like organize my life generally speaking. So my channel and my personal learning. So I built like a channel chart, like what is my content and categorizing all the different types of videos and streams I do. So it can be organized and not really schizo like it currently is. 
and I likewise did that with learning, like a, a pyramid of learning, like what are my top learning priorities and going down the period. The top priorities are languages, so it'd be like Latin, Greek, and Arabic and all that. But then also, um, and then just below that, primary historical sources, all that jazz. So it's going to be sweet um, once I get organized. And I'm going to be going full throttle, by the way, um, with like proper like stream lessons. So you know those kinds of ones like with Clement of Rome, for example, or the, or the uh, purgatory proof text and all that, where they're structured like a like a classroom lesson because that's something I'm actually well trained in. And it's, you've got the slides and it's very in-depth and all that stuff. Well, I want to make that like like a, the normal backbone of my content, really. So potentially as much as once a week, um, two on Bible and theology and two on history. And the first of those I'm starting off with is on the 10th, my 10th, um, on uh, a series on the ideal historian. And I do, and I intend beside that to start a series on like biblical biblical studies and the egalitarian theology and the, and the theology of the sexes. So perhaps like, for example, a multi-part series on 1 Timothy 2, chapter 12, of chapter 2 and all that stuff. Anyway, I'll get onto that soon. Yakundus is Laitus. Ah, uh, yep, yep, got ya, got ya. Cool, very good, very good. Glad you're going to enjoy it. Okay, so my fleets here are repaired. And this here is a planet I intend to take from our enemies and to commence uh, <clears throat> uh, Torah observance, so to speak. <laughs> Which reminds me, I need to turn on free policies so that I can actually change our... Oh, oh no, it's remained it allowed. That's good. Cool. Um, yeah, sweet. Everything's normal. Oh, man. Uh, Logos says, A day will come when we read the fathers in Latin and Greek and debate biblical interpretation in Hebrew. Based? Heck yeah, I can't wait for that to actually happen. I cannot wait. That's going to be awesome. It's going to be so awesome. Oh, yes. God willing, more people pour in. But hey, either way, that's okay by me. We're going to be getting this happening. We got the we got the dedicated boys here already, so it's going to be fun. And as usual, get the live chat happening, get get some good convo happening, some good banter, and even questions if you have any for anyone in the chat, but also, and especially for me, this is your best opportunity for that. Um, oh, that's good. Oh, wait, no, it's not him. That's one of, it's one of the other dudes. So the, the, the galaxy is largely being discovered now since the uh, founding of the Galactic, um, the Galactic Assembly, as it's called. But yes, so I'm going to move... Hmm... So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually, the good thing about splitting up your fleets is so you can take multiple targets at once. So I am going to send my primary fleet to take this system. And I'm going to send the Yehuda fleet to take the Syria and then the system next to it. And the Yosef fleet will remain in Icheon. <clears throat> Receiving communication. Logos says we need a resident Hebrew instructor and a resident Greek instructor for your Discord server. I intend to at least potentially be the Greek instructor or a Greek instructor because I'm, I'm open to having multiple. Um, but uh, because, yeah, once I once I get my Greek on again, I could do it now. I actually could. It's just I'm not organized. So it's not the best time to start it. And, and my Greek's kind of stalled a bit. So once I just pick it up again, I could. I could. I actually could. Um, Attacking enemy yeah. assets. Oh, okay. That's just their tiny non-existent fleet. And look at that. They're just sending it down. So they are... <laughs> Our operatives in the Poblin hierarchy have uncovered something unusual. Credible hints that the Republic of Imaka are plotting to deceive us. Quite how this information came to be known by the Poblin is unclear. Our own operatives' efforts to tail suspected Poblin intelligence operatives seem to have paid off, though. If the intelligence is genuine, the Poblin may have just done the hard work of gathering it for us. Who's the Republic of Imaka? Oh, these guys. Okay. Well, that's nice, honey. <laughs> Alright. Sweet. We're getting the upper hand. Uh, their war exhaustion is higher. Ooh, so close. Status quo is a way of like, it's a way of claiming victory, but without claiming victory. So whatever systems you currently occupy, you take them. Um, which reminds me, where are my, here we go. Okay, so we have the Saba Yahweh, our main, our main ground army. Army damage and army collateral damage. Yep, cool. Because we're not exactly uh, we're not we're not exactly gonna have a high priority on the rules of warfare on the ground because the ultimate fate of these guys is uh, yeah extermination <laughs> mass extermination as per the Torah. Um, Jeremiah is Jeff in the Discord server by the way. I don't know. Maybe I'm not sure. I'd have to I'd have to ask him. <clears throat> 
Um, so far, so good. So the cool thing with this game is that you have intel, so like how much you can see into specific star systems. So with this star system, you can see we have medium intel, so we can... We can't see exact things in the system, but we can tell what's in it. Um, whereas a system with like high and full intel, we have a pretty good clear view of what's happening. Um, so, so far, so good. We can't see over here, and that's this is likely where their main force is, because this is bordering with these guys whom they're at war with. Oh. Oh. Okay, they're still at war. Okay, that's good. As long as they keep out at war, we are we are in the green. Okay, cool. We can take this system now. <clears throat> uh, Trivery, mate. Good to see you here. Uh, thoughts about the Nephilim? Do you listen to the Lord of Spirits podcast? That's not... No, that's not Heiser's podcast. Um, yeah, the Nephilim is... It's, it's one of those other esoteric topics, um, like the two natures of Christ, that I, I, I don't care for much at the moment the two natures of christ would definitely be more important given given its implications but the nephilim even more so i'm um, at the moment it's 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 near the bottom of my priorities i don't really and to answer that question i don't really know a whole ton i don't pay much heed to it so uh <laughs> yeah that's pretty much it oh dear we need a okay we definitely need to up our energy our food and our consumer goods far out and we need more worlds man we need to inhabit more worlds hang on what kind of world because once we purge these guys from the planet oh it's a guy world that's freaking awesome the guy world is like a utopian paradise world it's like the best kind of world you can get so once we purge these these inhabitants the locals the natives we'll be able to inhabit it just as israel did with the land absolutely based beatus des virqui non ambulat in concilio malorum that's right oh man psalm chapter one man Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is on the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that's, that bears fruit in its season, and its leaf does not fail. In all, thing, in all he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chafe that the wind drives away. The wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous, but the Lord knows the way of the righteous, and the way of the wicked shall perish. Psalm chapter 1, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you're, okay, you're safely, I'm just keeping him here to kind of just be back up in case the enemy's main forces should come back here, which I am doubtful of. Yeah, they're still at war, and it's always good to be expanding our fleet, but we can't exactly do that at the moment. Um, Lord of Spirits is an Orthodox podcast hoped by Father De Young. Oh, okay, and Father Damick. Chivery, that's fair, lol. I became convinced they were real in large parts of the book of Joshua about the Israel limiting the Nephilim who were doing child sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. Child sacrifice, definitely a thing for the Canaanites, so wiping them out, absolute base move by Yahweh. Chivery, why are you unsure about the two natures of Christ? I'm not, I'm not unsure about the two natures of Christ. Don't, uh, yeah, don't misunderstand me. Um, it's just, it's just a topic I'm not big into it's 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 lower on the on the priority list for me um i want to stick with the things which i consider more pressing uh credo unum deum omnipotum et in spiritum sanctum quia patre procedit amen filioque no e patre filioque procedit no 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 don't worry i'm not i'm not i'm not a papist i'm not a dirty romanist but I am a Protestant, and the Protestants did largely affirm the Filioque, which is what makes me very special to be a Protestant who doesn't affirm the Filioque, uh, which is another issue that I'm not... I can actually kind of confuse the two natures of Christ issue. It's an important issue, don't get me wrong, but it's not high on my priorities. The Filioque is even less on my priorities, but in terms of my actual view, I don't affirm the Filioque, which definitely makes me a very special Protestant, so to speak. <laughs> oh, man. Oh! Oh, wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened here? Oh, no. Okay. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is awesome. So this guy's allies, I think. So this guy has allies and they just occupied this system here. Yeah, look at that. Oh, sweet. So he actually, he actually has an ally, which means these guys are stuffed. In fact, you know what that means? It's, if anything, it's actually a race to claim as many territories as possible. Um... But this is part of the promised stars. That's the problem. So if they do take that system, it, 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 they're probably not going to take it. It looks like it's just going to be occupied because you do occupy as many systems as you can to win a war, but you only take a certain amount. But if they do take that system, that would force me to go to the war with these guys to take it and then wipe out the natives because it is part of the promised stars. Remember that? 
Um, yeah, I'm going to take a bunch of systems. Heck yeah. All right, so those claim systems here with the blue check marks. <laughs> blue check marks. They're going to be mine. We're going to take them. We're going to win this war. And it's going to be based. <clears throat> Logos based. Jeremiah, whoa, rejecting the Filioque. That's right. That's right. But it's not a big deal to me. It's like... It, it, it literally means nothing for me with respect to fellowship, communion, and all that stuff. It's it's an absolute nothing burger. So, yeah. Okay, let's take... Let's take that system, and I'm going to send the Yehuda fleet over here to join up with Hayyad Elohim so that we can take this station. Oh, that's their capital right here. Ooh, boy. Okay, I don't think I want to take it just yet, though, because... The administrative costs in this game of taking an enemy capital is big. Mishnah Death Lords declare war on the on attack council. Eh, whatever. Okay, so now I'm going to send my Yahweh, uh, my <laughs> Saba Yahweh to land on this planet here. We will take it. <clears throat> so hopefully their defensive armies haven't been built up. No, they've only got two. They are screwed. Um, Chivery Bob, so you would affirm one person, two natures, definition of Chalcedon, right? Yeah, yeah, I would, I would. Um, yeah, bar any future investigations I may have, which may overturn my opinion. I don't foresee that yet, though, but either way. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, good. Oh, these guys were at war. Huh. These guys were at war before. Huh, there you go. Well, that's good, which means these guys can now focus all their efforts on these guys. <laughs> these, they, oh, man, the... Poblin hierarchy is stuffed. They are well and truly stuffed. Uh, what's this? What kind of world is this? Ocean world. Perfect. We can inhabit that. Yeah, I'll take that. Got another. Um, <laughs> is Paul a monophysite? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> sussy schismatic. I'm a sussy wussy schismatic, boys. I think I need to be purged. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this is good. Yes, this is the ring of systems I want to claim. These are Marauders. They're not good. Which... Ooh, it's a Gaia world. Oh, they're not going to stop me from inhabiting that, I don't think. So I actually do want to snake up and claim that. This world? No, nothing there. And we need, we need our sign ships to keep moving. How old are you? Ooh, you're 102 years old. You could die any day now. So we need you to get surveying, my man. Alright. So with this game, you want to pause a lot. Um, yeah, so you can just do things quickly. Planetary invasion commenced. Oh, yeah, Jeremiah, I just remembered your old vid. Yeah, it's the best video. Oh, we're invading, boys. Ground invasion force. Invaded. Boom, we got it. We captured our first planet, boys. Please, ladies and gentlemen, put a, put a finger up emoji and an alhamdulillah in the chat, boys, for our first planet captured from the heathens. And now let me make sure... That in the species category. Okay, so they're not under our direct control just yet. Once they are, they'll come under the species thing and we can make sure that their rights are exterminated. <laughs> Is James White based or cringe? I honestly can't tell. Some of his anti Catholic and anti Orthodox polemics seem cringe to me. He can be hit and miss in that, but I think he does make some really, really good arguments. Um, uh, Logos Logistics Paul, are you familiar with James Jordan? He's a Presbyterian theologian who specializes in biblical symbolism. I've heard the name, but I haven't. In fact, I think he was actually recommended by Cobain in our interview. Um, but I haven't, I haven't read him, so I can't really say much or anything. Um, okay, cool. We've got our fleets here. Let's park them up. And then we will get to take this system. Oh, pff, that's a, I didn't even need to bring them both here, but oh well. Um, I guess they'll be useful for... Will we need to bomb the planet to loosen up their... De oh, they've got non, non-existent non defenses. Uh, attacking target, orbital bombardment. Attacking enemy okay. vessels. Whatever. Alright. Let's attack. Let's take this system. This is going to be an easy war. Attacking enemy vessels. Even though their fleet power attacking is technically equivalent. Vessels. So I don't know what they're doing with their fleets right now, but... Uh, oh, this is where the on-attack council is. Interesting. Oh, they are actually... They actually have occupied this border system in the On Attack Council. Yeah, it can be weird with wars. Like, AI can be losing so much of their own systems, but then taking a bunch of enemy systems. Oh, dear, I need to buy more food. Because we're in a deficit. Because this game's economic management is absolutely trash. Absolutely trash. Who's taking our most food? Alright, you guys are... Two farmers. 
And you, you got six clocks and you're still losing amenities, you absolute flipping numpties. Ah! This game can get annoying. Can we build more? Okay, we can build more star bases. Which means... Can we build the food ones yet? No, we can't build the food thing over yet. Oh, this is annoying. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Ever heard of Johan Gerhard? Uh, every Jordan Cooper podcast they hear, I, I listen to, I hear that name. So I can't say that I haven't heard of him, even though I have no idea what he's about. I know he's a Lutheran, but that's like, that's like it. Oh, yes, let's research anomaly. Oh, you don't have anyone? That's a shame. Research anomaly after that. No, not you. Okay. We've got this system. Very good. Okay, cool. Let's, let's invade our next planet, and I think we'll call this a war. Okay, good. Oh, because, um... Yeah, after... Oh, hang on, actually. Do I want to secured. take... Yeah, I think I will take that. For the giggles, why not? To kind of secure the borders. A bit. Ooh, science. Extra minerals, that's good. Always using it. Ooh, auto cannon is good. But exotic gases are... Somewhat better. Actually, yeah, let's go with the auto cannon. And now we're losing consumer goods, of course. Below the surface of Sirius 4 lives the most peculiar organism. Scans and samples show that it is some sort of mycelium littered with spores compared to the traditional size of spores in our home world. These are massive. Their surface is shimmering kaleidoscope and blah, blah, blah. The strange thing about them, they seem to form a network capable of generating what science group believes to be a signal. Current emissions are but it might be possible to find where they lead. We will try to identify the signal Situation destination. Cool. Updated. <clears throat> I'm a fan of James Jordan also. I've listened to several of his lectures on the symbolism in the book of Revelation. And it's pretty compelling stuff. Gerhard is the zenith of Lutheran scholastic theology. Really can't get much better. Okay, there you go. Well, my thing is to also, with the different traditions, to get like the most exemplary champions of those views, like the most authoritative sources, so to speak. And from what it looks like, Gerhard is, is like that for Lutheran scholastics. So once I feel like getting to that topic, I'll pick him up. Um, okay, let's get out of the fleet. Hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where's it? Where are you going? Why are you going there? No, why are you going there, bro? I need you to take this system. Which we will claim now. Oh, yes, Unity. Produces three Unity. Yes, Ground invasion force definitely. has seized a planet. Done. Boom, we've got two planets now, boys. And the uh, process, so to speak, will commence once, uh, yeah, once these guys decide to surrender. Which will be the case once we take this slide. I can already set status quo right now, but I want to make it a full and proper victory. So I just need to take this last system, because I'm demanding it, and then deal them a bit more damage so I can, like, I don't know, jump into this system and, yeah, well, I'll just jump into this system right now and take it over. Whoops. Don't do that. And that'll that'll increase their war exhaustion and thus their likelihood to surrender. Sell some minerals. Buy some more food. And I don't think we're gonna be needed to re reinforce fleets, so I'm just gonna Wait, why haven't you surveyed there? We admit defeat, but do not think this is anything more than a temporary setback for the Poblin hierarchy. Yeah, yeah, rightio. He says as two entire worlds of his people are about to be exterminated. Now, let's look at what matters. Okay, as you can see, we've got a bunch of other species here who are, who are inhabiting these other planets we just conquered. Undesirables, undesirables, undesirables. Set rights, purge type. Nah. Exterminate. Actually, should I exterminate or force labor? Actually, no, I was just a straight up harem. Harem was just straight up extermination. You don't get anything out of it. Set that. Extermination. Yes, we are doing the Torah right now, boys and girls. <laughs> to be blunt. <laughs> Okay, extermination. Effective pops are systematically eradicated. This is the fastest form of purging available. 
Uh, bottom quote, the extermination squads are efficient. The dissolution of entire populations naturally takes time, but they get the job done. They get the job done, boys and girls. <laughs> And we're using, as our main tool for the trade, we are using Flexicide. That's right. Flex, the guys at Flex Tape have decided to make for us the tools for destroying entire populations, my boys. <laughs> oh, man. Logos, I've been shilling this video to friends. Chad, thank you very much. Jeremiah, yo, simply saying, we got two planets, bro, with such a calm voice as Chad vibes. <laughs> Paul taking music requests. Um, I would if YouTube wasn't such a corporate shill that like shilling any kind of music with copyright could get your stream nuked. I would if that was not the case. But there is the mu YouTube music library. So that is permissible, I guess. So if you could find something that's in the music library, then maybe if, if I feel like it, I could boot up the music thing for the stream and uh, make it happen. Christian, at the other poll, who's your favorite theologian? And if you're not much of a favorites type, how about a top three? <sighs> that is genuinely difficult. Um, he might... Or they, I'd have to put them as one because they're really a tag team effort. Among my favorites, so I can't really say a number one, but among my favorites, they wouldn't really call themselves... I don't know if they'd call themselves theologians per se. They'd recognize they technically are, but I don't think they'd call themselves that. But Michael Foster and Non-Tenant, because their work on the on the theology of the sexes is just... It's very decisive, definitive, makes sense of the spirit of the scriptures, and was fundamental to my understanding today. So they're among my top favorites. Even though they're like... They're alive, they're on the internet, they're not massive. They're pretty niche, if anything. But um, I genuinely say they're, they're, they're definitely among my favorites. Um, who else? Who else would be a favorite theologian of mine? <sighs> what else do I have here? <sighs> yeah, I can't really say because I don't. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I don't read theologians per se much, but biblical scholars and historians and all that. That's kind of how I formulate my theology a lot. I don't really often look at theologians a ton but actually among my favorites right now would definitely be samuel rutherford one of the westminster divines if i believe um because of his book lex rex the law is king basically defining a good thorough biblical doctrine of the state and opposing the the royalists so to speak who believe in the divine right of kings that the king is the law that resistance against the king even if he does evil is bad and he's fantastic so yeah Hey, Eric, good to see you here, mate. Um, Logos, got to find Creative Commons music. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I mean, hey, if you can do that, um, I'd be open to that. I did play, that being said, I did play Harvard Nagila. That's not, like, copyrighted, so that was that was fine. I played that when we started a war. Um, Christian, interesting, never heard of them. The, you should definitely look up. Look up the blog, It's Good to Be a Man, It Will Change Your Life. Eric, Paul the Apostle is my favorite base. Amen. If we're including the Apostles, then yeah, absolutely. The Apostle Paul is my number one favorite theologian by far. Um, Logos, how far are you in your Hebrew studies? Haven't haven't done it in a while. So yeah, I can't really say. Um, okay, let's bring our fleets back. Ayad Elohim, where are you based? You're based over here. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna base the Yosef fleet at the Belas, Belas, Balesa system. <clears throat> so you can go down there. I'll keep our forces here. Oh yes, let's look at the plants. Let's, let's see how the uh, the side is going, so to speak. So as you can see, the only people occupying these top jobs, high priest, ruler, enforcer, metallurgist, all this stuff are humans, because humans are migrating to this world. And if you notice right here, Seven pops being purged. <laughs> That's the game, boys and girls. This game lets you do that. You're not allowed to name your empire Nazi. Oh, no, 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 no. But you are allowed to... <laughs> you are allowed to genocide an entire race. So, yeah. Actually, see how my relations are since I am... I am... These guys are receptive to me, but their relations are going down because I am genocidal. But they only brought it down by negative 35, so otherwise they're, they're cool with me. <laughs> How about these guys? 
They are suspicious, but yeah, seems all right. Only two envoys still so far. All right, guys, I need to go somewhere. If you are still playing after two hours, I'll come back. Yeah, probably not, but hey, glad to see you here, mate. Good to see you. I hope you have a lovely, lovely day. <clears throat> Eric Bishop, they're cool now, but little do they know. Oh, yeah, little do they know the full extent of what is happening here. And now people are, over time, closing their borders to me because of what I am doing. You know, I, I, I mean, hey, why? how could they blame me, man? I'm just following the word of God, bruh. Like, what are, what are they for? The words of men? Oh, I'm sorry, the words of aliens? Pfft. Freaking Xenos, am I right? <laughs> am I right? But yes, anyway, let's expand our borders, shall we? So I'm going to build... Where do I want to build next? Um, Let's go here. And you are doing nothing, so you can survey here. Actually, no, you're too far away. You can survey this anomaly. And then this one. How old are you? 57. Oh, perfect. Perfect. You have plenty of time. <clears throat> okay, you got no one. That's why you stopped. Leader experience. Yep, let's do that. Let's get you surveying the system. And then... Yeah, I don't know. I'll do something with you next. Panos, good to see you here, bro. Hope you're going well. Eric Bishop, aliens are demons. Maybe not demons, but they are heathens <laughs> who must come under our dominion. Uh, Panos, so basically, this is so this is is this basically less aggressive Imperium of Man from 40k, more or less, more or less. <clears throat> our initial expansion with empires that are adjacent to us at the beginning, uh, we exterminate them. When, they, when we take them over, as per the Torah, because they are of the promised stars, which were given to us, so we move into that territory and we totally displace the native population. Once we claim that, though, then we get rid of that policy and we just conquer the rest of the galaxy in a generic sense. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, I'd ask the Apostle Paul about the role of good deeds and salvation. Specifically, I'd ask how the Epistle to the Romans harmonizes with the Epistle of James. <laughs> Next minute, he's like, wait, James wrote an epistle? Ew, what is this, a pistol of straw? Nah. <laughs> That'd be an absolute bra moment right there, if something like that happened. Uh, yes, let's station the Yehuda fleet at the Play Tory system. Let's do that. Um... The station in there, so we can be ready to respond to any threat should they decide to turn on us, which I don't think they will because they're receptive at the moment. Actually, no, I don't think I will. No, in that case, I don't even need to station them there, so I'll just station them at the Icheon system. Bang. <clears throat> Technology secured. Uh, Athanasius of Alexandria and Irenaeus of Lyon would be among my favorite non-Bible author theologians. Yeah, they're pretty darn cool. I can, uh, I can understand that. Irenaeus has some very fascinating ideas, though, to say the least. Yeah, everybody's closing their borders to me. Everyone hates me. <laughs> Actually, have I opened my borders this far? Oh. Whoa, they're hostile to me now. Okay, so every time I continue being genocidal, they hate me more and more. Um... Okay, so that's actually not good. So in that case, we do need to send the Yehuda fleet to be stationed up there. Because these guys could attack. You never know. Their fleets are superior to ours, so we need to build them up. Ooh, okay, what are we researching next? Energy subsidies or physics research or hyperdrive 2. Hyperdrive 2. That's a very good thing. Logos, I'm glad Luther chose not to reject the epistle of James in the end, same here. Christian Aquinas translated Romans 3.28, faith alone before Luther did, based. Absolutely based. Hey, Benjamin, good to see you here, mate. Uh, Aquinas seems to be more and more like a proto-Protestant. <laughs> not consistently, but in specific ways, like, eh. Ooh, ooh, these, that's good. Okay, these guys are at war now with the Otago citizen state. Where are they? Where is the Otago citizen state? I suspect complete. that there's some way down here, maybe? Hang on. One second, I'm going to mute myself. Hang on. 
Det så borde ju öppningen vara. Just uh, checking something up with my brother. Well, he, he's checking up something with me. Hey, seven people watching you. That's awesome. My uh, my YouTube phone doesn't show that. <clears throat> I guess it's because it just doesn't update. Hey, <laughs> eight people awesome. This is great. This is awesome. Glad to see so many people here. Um, terribly sorry. I got my th thing up. Oh, oh, that's the Otago citizen state. They're rebels from... Okay. They're a rebelling little micro state. Okay, and that's not really going to help us a ton. Because it's good when your hostile neighbors are at war with someone else, because then that that distracts them. They're not going to be able to... They won't attack you. So, yeah. <coughs> oh, man. The cool thing about Marauders is that you can hire them to send a massive fleet to raid a target and cause them a bunch of damage. Oh, and they're already raiding, of course, so we can't hire them. Great. <coughs> I'm glad Prots have James in the canon of scripture, but I think it would be more internally consistent if it wasn't. Yeah, no. I feel like too many people dismiss Irenaean theology because simply because of his out-of-pocket statement about Jesus' age, but come on, there's so much more to it. I don't think it's just that. He does say some... Um, like it's And it's not just an out-of-pocket statement, but it's a general thing of his theology about how Jesus had to pass through these ages in order to recapitulate the the all humanity, Star which is like... Charted. No, I don't buy that, really. Star system chart. <clears throat> I mean, it's nice typologically, but not really necessary. Construction complete. <sighs> okay, so this planet's now appearing here because we got some humans here occupying it. Uh, oh. Whoa, what happened here? Oh. Okay, so we just... Situation oh, okay, so literally completed. everyone got purged from this planet and now it's, like, abandoned entirely. <laughs> Can we get a base in the chat for, like, totally eradicating a planet's natives so now that the Israelites, the space Israelites, can move in? <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> alright, alright. So now we're going to colonize this world. We're going to build a human colony ship. It's not low habitability. What are we going to call this world? We need another, we need another traditional Hebrew city. Um, and it's Hebrew name. Um, what are we going to call it? What are we going to call it? Tribe of Irenaeus is the single biggest Christian theologian. Second only to St. Paul. You cannot change my mind. Uh... Eric, Discord's down, thank heavens. Uh, what? God, I hope not. Um, <clears throat> what are we calling this city? What are we calling... Oh, not this city. What Hebrew city are we calling this planet? You know, I'm just going to look it up. Um, oh, no, we don't have Bethlehem yet. Oh. Then again... Actually, this planet could be a bread basket, because that's what by, that was Bethlehem that's literally means. It means house of bread. So I could just build like a ton of food, um, ton of food districts here. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, yeah, let's call it Bethlehem. I'm going to call it in its proper spelling though. Not Bethlehem, but Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Because that's how it's actually said. There we go. Colony ship under construction and we are building it. <clears throat> so this is good. Because the thing with this game is that even while you're displacing, um, you still got to... Uh, pay upkeep, which can be an issue. Uh, actually, yes, because there's no one in the tech, there's no one in any jobs yet, I can actually just remove most districts and thus lower some upkeep. Um, this one I'll keep because we actually got humans occupying that position now. So, yeah. Um, yep. Panos, I believe... Gennadius Scholarius once said something like, if you only hadn't, you hadn't been born in the West, then you'll be in infallible in theology as you are in moral philosophy in reference to Aquinas. <laughs> <clears throat> Logos Logistics Bethlehem is a very special name not to be used lightly. Yeah, it's true. I mean, like, it's it's like, well, for one, it's it's a place. It's In the end, it is simply a place. I With respect to the name of the Lord and all that stuff, yeah, 100%, I agree. But <clears throat> it's not like, um, Bethlehem in itself, it's not like something truly special per se. So yeah, well, I wouldn't say that. <clears throat> uh, 
um, blah, 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 panels. Yes, there are a lot of fans of Aquinas in the East. Isn't there even an Eastern icon of Aquinas? I remember seeing that, or was that just made up? I, I think it is real. Oh, we have caught a delegate from the Allied East. Key worlds in a rare blunder, letting slip their empire's true feelings about us to another anonymous party. More than a usual political mudslinging, these amount to an outright insult. If, it, as it appears, we are subjects of a fierce ridicule among Iskian society. How dare they? How dare they? How dare these boys? They'll pay for it. They'll all pay for it one day. We don't need a reply. We need. We don't need a pay tit for tat. They'll all pay one day. We'll have the galaxy under our under our foot. The Lord will have the nations under His footstool, as His footstool. So, doesn't matter in the end. We'll win. We are losing so much food. Far out. Okay, what's with this planet? Actually, we'll build one agriculture district. And we will build a temple. Actually, no, no, not a temple. We're not allowed to do that. We only Situation have one temple. Autothon monument. Actually, that's probably the last thing we need. We need... Situation log updated. Is there a food building here I can build? No, I don't think so. Not yet, at least. Um... <clears throat> Order to one monument would be good. Yeah, why not? Um, when is our next human migrating here? Eh, not long. Um, ooh, okay. We have fully purged all the pops on this world here, so... <laughs> Logos, I'm not saying using Bethlehem is blasphemy. Oh, right, right, right. What I'm saying is now in your game in Bethlehem has high expectations to live up to in my mind. Okay, no, no, fair enough. Sorry for misinterpreting you. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. No, it does have some... Uh... Actually, you know what? This is the Gaia world. This should be Bethlehem. No. We haven't colonized that other world yet, so it's technically not Bethlehem just yet. This is Bethlehem because this is the Gaia world. It's big. It's ideal. Like, it's 100% habitability world for us. So it's, it's amazing. Um, yeah, and we can build a lot of agriculture here. So this world has great promise. This is Bethlehem. This is the actual Bethlehem. Um, when the colony ship is built, I'll just change its orders to colonize the same world, but not call it Bethlehem. Is it being built here? No, it's not. Is it being built here? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, how do you feel about infant baptism as of right now? All for it. I do love me that... Um, that covenant theology, I do love that, where it's not a mere individual believers and where individuals make statements, but it's about one's household as well. Um, uh, the heads of households do truly lead their households into the faith. And so with respect to infants, uh, yes, that is totally legitimate thing. <clears throat> Christian, in the Lutheran tradition, faith is understood as trust, not merely mental assent to a proposition. 100% agreed. I'd say likewise with the authentic um, reform tradition. Establish embassy, sure, why not? How are these guys looking at us? Okay, not, not as bad. So I think the genocidal thing has stopped because now we have completed our mass exterminations on these two planets. Look, guys, can we get a can we get an Alhamdulillah in the chat, boys? Because we have finished the total purging of the heathens from these captured worlds and they are now ours. So let's get that celebration in the chat. Alhamdulillah. Oh man, this is great. Chivery, there are Byzantine icons of Aquinas, but they're typically done by Uniates. Ah, fair enough. Imagine if they had a Luther icon in an Easter cheese in church. That'd be, that'd be such a, that'd be such a keck moment. Oh, man. Uh, there are icons of Martin Luther circulating around the internet. There are. Why do people refer to absolute divine simplicity? It seems like a solely polemic label. Alhamdulillah. I don't think, I don't think it is solely polemic. I think there are genuinely some people who go way too much with the divine simplicity. Like, some people, not a whole ton, but some people... May genuinely say things like God's attributes are all one in the same. There's no distinction, like which is rare. It's, it can be used as a straw man, but I think I actually have seen people say that, which would be absolutely ridiculous. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, I wonder if people make icons of Jan Hus. <laughs> Let's look that up. I'm actually really curious now. My 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 unofficial autism is like when I find something that's slightly curious, I'll look it up. Jan Hus icon. Mm. No, no, I can't see an icon. You got your usual highly detailed drawings, but not an icon. All right. Byzantine right Lutheranism is a thing. Yes, it is. Really fascinating. 
still losing food, but we should be making up for it soon with Bethlehem once we... Actually, yes, let's build a couple... Don't even have any farmers working there yet, so whatever. Okay, perfect. Um, this world is like... So what are we going to call this world now that Bethlehem is taken? Another Hebrew... Okay, let's look up ancient Israel cities. Israel cities... Ashkelon. Oh, yeah, Ashkelon. Yeah, yeah, Ashkelon. I don't think we've done... Yeah, yeah, let's do that. And let's make sure it's correct transliteration. Strong Hebrew. Ashkelon. Ashkelon. So that's the Q. There we go. <clears throat> Ashkelon. Mm-hmm. Everything about divine simplicity makes sense to me, except when people drag it all the way out to the point where God, they say God's actions are identical to his essence. So, it looks like you affirm, Christian, a kind of essence energy's distinction, kinda. Um, which will make you very EO right there. <laughs> you don't know, you keep on surveying here, brah. Oh, this is, bro, this is so ideal. Look, okay, look at this, look at this. We've got this cluster of stars here. No exit way except this choke point. Perfect, perfect. That was, that was the taking. In fact, I'll survey that. And then I'll survey that. And then that. And then that. There we go. Perfect. It's going to be great. <clears throat> Abraham, try every, Abraham was made righteous by his faith, trust in God, not by keeping ritual works of the law like circumcision. Christian, so you are of the opinion that by works of law, Paul merely meant ceremonial laws. Pog, good to see you here, brother. This game looks so confusing. It's actually the least confusing game of the Paradox games. I kid you not. Of Paradox Grand Strategy games, at least for me, it's the easiest to understand. Perhaps because I actually found it fun and I took the time to learn it and all that, but I genuinely think having tried out Crusader Kings, Hoi, even Hoi 4, which is way simpler than like EU4, for example, or Crusader Kings... Those other games are much more complicated. Way, way more complicated. So yeah, this game actually isn't that crazy compared to others, funnily enough. Oh, the Tel Akur Cartel Mega Corporation established a new branch. Son of... Mm. Okay, so context. This game also has mega corporations of different kinds and they can establish branch offices on your planets. Most of them can be good because they give like extra energy credits to your planets. There is, however, a criminal syndicate type which can also establish on your planets, and they increase crime. So this cartel has just established a branch on my planet. Tell our cool, where the heck are these guys? They're a criminal syndicate on the opposite flipping side of the galaxy. Oh, man, I need to expel them. But the stupid thing with this game is that you can't just expel it at a whim. You have to go through like the stupid process of declaring war and all that stuff. If I was to declare war Star on this guy, he doesn't have any allies, that's good. I think he is a war summoner also as well. <clears throat> Christian, it's probably because I was watching a lot of day I was watching a lot I watched a lot of Jay Dyer when first studying Trinitarianism. Ah, fair enough. Local logistics, Pentecostals are the one holy Catholic Apostolic Church confirmed. Ah uh, yes. Pastor Brian Houston sits on the seat of Peter. Facts. Like currently that seat is being temporarily vacated in the moment, and now it's under Pastor Phil Dooley. He now sits on the seat of Peter. For those who don't know Hillsong Church politics at the moment. It's not, not politics, but it's because Pastor Brian Houston is under investigation by a witch hunt from our government. Yay. Um, Chiver, I wouldn't use the word... Uh, Pogretti. Oh, Dwarf Fortress is nuts. Pogretti. So this is basically Civ 6, but in space. Uh, definitely not quite. Um, Civ 6 is turn-based and like hex tiles and all that. <clears throat> Whereas this is more free-flowy with um, systems and it's real-time. So it's actually happening in real time. But yes, Dwarf Fortress is nuts with the depth and I can't wait to get it when they actually release the Steam Edition, which includes a proper graphics and not just ASCII art. I intend to get into it when, that, when that's released. Ah, nice. <clears throat> what are we going to build next? Situation on my Okay, cool. We're making a lot of energy. Alloys are not too crash hot. Hey, we can upgrade our capital on that on Yerushalayim. 
<clears throat> so what are we going to do now? Um, next goal now, I think, is going to be preparing to take over these guys. Oh, from the Fallen Empire. Custodian Predator activated message follows attention organic civilization widespread biological vulnerabilities mean detecting the Adamite population. Will require inoculation, bioinjection units are prepared to dispatch your... Kit. Biological pop happiness, lithoid pop happiness, negative five percent. So these guys are trying to force mass vaccination on my people. This fallen empire is trying to force max va mass vaccination on my people, ladies and gentlemen. Am I going to say yes to this? Am I going to say yes to a foreign power and forcing itself on my like that? We do not trust these inoculations. Whoa, 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 bro, bro. Are we like, guys, is space Israel anti-science now? Are really, uh, is space Israel now the empire of anti-science? Yes. We do not trust these inoculations. Stuff off. <clears throat> Try every Bob. What's the most base position that you unironically believe? Um, I would not be able to say it on YouTube. I will say that. If I was doing something like what um, Christian did and I was just streaming it here but then delete it and then upload it somewhere else, I would. But I can't say it here. <clears throat> I can maybe use code words. Um, I mean... <laughs> I mean, okay. Among my most base positions, which has been my, my chat, which has been 90% of my conversation on this stream series, has basically been that the, that the so-called genocides, which were not that of the Old Testament were 100% justified by Yahweh. There is no reason to say that they were wrong. They were good and holy. That's it. That's among my most base positions, I guess, compared to the world. But my other base positions, um, yeah, they could they could risk the YouTube gods having a, yeah, having a, having a, having a bad day with me. Technology. Secure. Type it on Discord. I don't want to risk that either because you can get maybe trolls in the future who will scroll through, try to cancel me and all that. I'm trying to make myself cancel proof, but um, on Gab, Actually, yeah, yeah, because on Gab, I'm intending, once I get Gab Pro, to have, like, a hot takes irregular series where I'll give, like, my, like, unpopular based quote-unquote takes that wouldn't be allowed on mainstream sources. So, I'll probably do it there. I'll probably, you know what, check my Gab. People, subscribe to my Gab. Right flipping now. I'm gonna, tell me if this link works. It should. Gab.com slash Paulos. Think. Hang on, let me check. Gab, Paulos. Yep. Yep. Yep, that works. Okay, I'll put it in the chat. Follow my Gab right now, if you have not, ladies and gentlemen. It is where I'll... It's where I'm totally unfiltered, uh, once I start to use it more regularly. Um, and I'll probably post my most based, or among my most based hot takes, which wouldn't be allowed on YouTube there very soon, maybe after this stream. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Paul speaks of his most based belief while being a descendant of the Canaanites. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Joel 3 has choice things to say about the ancestors of the Lebanese. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at that. Okay, our food deficit's going down. Got this tea here. My nose is a little... If, you, if, you, if you're hearing it over the mic, my nose is a little bit how you're going. Star system charted. But yeah, what we're doing right now... We're just doing some general empire expansion. So we can move to this system now. And then we'll expand to that, and then to that, and then we'll just take over all these. We'll survey there, then there. Then there, and then there. Cool. And we're, I think I might prepare for my next expansion with those guys over there. These guys are inferior to us. They're not even at war with us, but their fleet is inferior. They're not in a position to attack us anytime soon. So I think we'll be sweet to just kind of sit on them. Um, these guys, I'm going to prepare for my next war with. <clears throat> what is their attitude towards us now? Hostile. Hovering there. Mm. How, many, how are our defenses here? They're looking pretty sharp. It's good. It's good. I think I will... Actually, hang on. Ship designer. How are we... Oh, cool. Sweet. Oh, darn. No, that's right. It's on auto upgrade and I can't afford the power yet. So, oh well. Oh yeah, we can auto-upgrade our ships now. Um, actually, do I want an auto-cannon? 
16, 7 to 21, 8 to 16, average damage, 4 to 16. Yeah, because it shoots much fi much faster. Auto cannon does extra shield damage and more hull damage. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm going to put the auto cannon there. That should definitely help out our ships. Our interceptor classes. And then we'll get the auto cannon over here. And we are sweet. Okay. Cool. All right, let's upgrade our fleets. Starting with Yehuda because they are on our enemy's border. So it's a 1.2k fleet power right now. And ah, we need more consumer goods somewhere, but where? Vessels ah, upgraded. these guys should do it. And no one's going for bloody clerk jobs. What's wrong with these people? Vessels upgraded. Cool, we're going to 1.3k, that's good. Construction. Upgrade you, and let's upgrade, hang on. <sighs> so dumb. Shipyard. Um. Vessels upgraded. Resource silo, why not? Actually, we need to build a starport here as well so we can get trading from this planet to the rest. Sphere of influence expanded. Nope. Okay. Uh, the other poor thoughts on the new Star perspective. It's cringe. <laughs> um, uh, my reading on it is not the most wide, but from what I've seen with certain claims, like Paul only talked about ceremonial works when he said works of the law, that's just straight up wrong. Um, so I'm definitely not for that. Oh, hello. We have another fallen empire. Pitiful creatures, know that we roamed the stars for eons before your hapless species mastered spaceflight. If any of your wretched little ships come across into our space, do not expect them to return. Keep out of our way or we'll make you. Another fallen empire. Don't want to get on their bad side in the early or mid game. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. So that's my take on, uh, on the, um, what should we call it, on the new perspective. Uh, the other poll, why does Australia hate freedom move to America? Because we're a, we're a nation of gullible little sheep and our and our state thinks there's nothing more but um, little materials to be handled. They think they know best for us so they can govern every single aspect of our lives rather than specifically what God ordained the state for and that is order and justice. No, they think they can govern everything. Um, yeah, that's why Australia absolutely sucks. Oh, the fallen empire's up here. Ooh, interesting. Okay, okay. So it's definitely a choke point because militant fallen empires in particular do not want you colonizing in systems next to them. So that's a choke point already right there. So that's, 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 that's pretty good. That's pretty good. It handicaps our expansion further, but that's actually good because we've got a good expansion already. Um, let's build a star post here so we can get excavating. Guy world definitely going to have that. Let's build here too. Um, science ships. Oh, what are you doing? Why aren't you... Anomaly Research anomaly. Ooh, we have lots of little research projects to actually do. Let's get you doing them. Research projects. Research projects. Um, research project. And you go for that massive anomaly up there. Okay, what are we getting next? Orbital bombardment damage negative twenty five percent. Oh yeah, that's against us. War exhaustion gain negative. Okay, that's really good. Hostile influence. Claim influence cost, that's good. Upgrade cost. I think this one's going to be better for us come the next war for our defenses. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Logos are wide, you hope. Being in a Commonwealth country, I want an Anglicanism to be true. Yeah, yeah, right. Panos, it just hits different when I see Space Israel on the screen. <laughs> so true. Yeah, look at that. Right there, Space Israel. <laughs> <laughs> We're winning, boys. Take what I will do, secure. once I once the galactic situation becomes more clear, so once the real big players start to come out, I'll actually rename those major empires into the historic enemies of Israel. So we'll have, like, Space Assyria and Space Babylon. <laughs> That'll be fun. And then maybe, like, the big final enemy in the game will be, like, Space Rome. That'd be, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to consider my military strategy. So my strategy for this next war will be take another two systems from these guys, plus this, 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 and this. 
another two planets that is. Assuming there is only two planets in these systems. If not, all good. Um, I think, actually, you know what, for strategic purposes, I think I'll take this system as well, so that in the war following that, to continue the conquest, I can immediately jump here and take that system. Because with games like this, with strategy games, with grand strategy games, you've got to think 12 steps ahead for every move you make. <clears throat> you want to make sure all your bases are covered. So, right now, their fleets are superior to mine, which is not good. But, in terms of science, I believe I should be ahead. Where am I on the... Number 22. Okay, that's better than last time. I am... Oh, dear. Synthesis Pro... Okay, that's that. This is actually a custom empire of mine. And they're a machine empire, so it makes sense they're better at science at the moment, but... How about these guys, the Ardiques? Where are they at? Okay, I am... Ooh, I'm just beating the Adiks at science, which is good, which would mean my ships may be superior to theirs. But it depends on what re what technologies are actually researched. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to build another research lab here. Ah, oh, perfect. We we have colonized Ash Ashkelon, which is good. Um, What's next? I think I'll build generators and food. That's what we most immediately... Actually, we don't most immediately need food. We need an industrial district. So I'll get that happening as well. Because we are making a buttload of minerals in the moment. Construction really, 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 really good. <clears throat> Construction complete. Ooh, perfect. Build this system as well. Arctic world. Let's build there. Cool. So now we can start excavating that archaeological site once we claim it. And we've, we've got this system now. So we can... Um... You know what? I think I'll actually send you once you're done here. Special project complete. Yes, we've got another Voltam artifact. So, for to remind the people, every when you start a game in this, you find a precursor civilization, and you've got to find like six of their artifacts. Once you do, you can then locate their home world, which is full of resources, and then you'll be able to get a special um, relic. And relics in this game are special items which give you bonuses. So, how many Voltaum artifacts do we have? We have three out of four. That's good. So, I'm going to send this guy, because he's really high level, to actually excavate this world. And I'm going to get another scientist. I'm going to hire another scientist to... Uh, yes. Hire another scientist to research these projects. And... Yeah, we'll see how we go. Because <clears throat> the earlier we can get that, the better. At the other poll, I know you don't accept Basmusical Regeneration. Eh, I'm debating it. So do you have like just so you just have a minority interpretation of church history or do you openly dissent from the tradition here? Um what do you mean? Do you do you mean my position? Do I accept a position that's minority or do I think my position is totally unattested? I'm not sure. I haven't looked at um I've heard I've heard like from Gavin Ortland, for example, Dr. Ortland, that um some fathers actually don't support baptismal regeneration, at least as commonly attested. So I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know what my... I, and I'm still kind of trying to define my position myself. I've kind of see... It looks like the evidence is pointing to me of a re, of a baptismal regeneration with respect to the actual literal regeneration. So sanctification. I don't believe baptism justifies. I don't believe that can be held. But I do believe that it is um, regenerative in the sanctification sense. That makes, that makes perfect sense. It's actually bringing you in. Because just to justify... Is God's declarative, His declaration, whereas the sanctification is the actual process of bringing you in, and that's what I believe baptism uh, begins the process. <clears throat> uh, I can honestly, I've, I've never been slightly tempted by Rome. Me neither. Me neither. Um, they've given good arguments with which I had to reckon with, but I've never really been tempted to join Rome otherwise because I could just see elsewhere that they were wrong. Um, whoa, we are losing a lot of minerals here. Let's terraform you. And of course, shock and horror, we are low on amenities on almost... Okay, no, only on two of our worlds. That's good, but that's still not good enough. Construction. Because the, they never go to the clerk job. Why do they not... That actually annoys me so much. I mean, it's not the worst. Our plants are still largely stable, but they could be better. Okay, yeah, let's actually get upgrading our fleets. So, you. Ouch, that cost a lot. Um, 
Hayad Elohim. Let's buy more alloys. Great thing about making a ton of minerals, that's the best thing in this game, so you can sell it and buy lots of other materials. Construction complete. Okay. Now reinforce you. Bang. Hopefully that should tip the balance of power back in our favor. Are these guys hostile with anyone? I wonder. They are. Okay, that's good. Technology secured. So something we can hope for is that these two go to war. Because they really hate each other. In fact, they hate each other more than they hate me. So, yeah, they could go to war with each other. That'd be awesome. That'd be really, really... Although, these guys are currently at war with someone else at the moment. So, interesting. Their fleet's inferior. They can't get to me. Their code breaking is better than ours. Eh. We need to increase our intel on them. Because we can't see their fleet powers just yet. <clears throat> Um, Christian, I knew the true church had to have bishops, priests, and deacons from researching history. Wrong. This eliminated all traditions lower than Methodism. I found Sola Scriptura logical. Your face is logical, bruh. Uh, the history of RCC appealing to forge documents to argue for the supremacy of Roman bishop really destroyed any credibility they might have in my mind. I think that's, I think that's, that's totally true. I really liked, um, whatever qualms I might have with him on other things, I really, really did like Ubi Petrus's uh, analogy for that in his on on his video on papal forgeries that if you already have the deeds to the house why would you forge it so in other words if rome already knew that it had real authentic proofs for its position why would they make forgeries that's a really really good point <clears throat> okay how long have we gone going for? Da, 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 da. We just passed. Okay, yeah, we're in an hour and eight minutes right now. That's pretty good. Okay, cool. You got that system. You're surveying, and then once you're done with that, you can get excavating. Technology secured. And you can build mining stations here. Whoa! What's up with our energy, Bruh. Probably the new districts and the new ships we made, but far out, our energy is just tanked, Bruh. Um, edicts fund. Oh yeah, the edicts fund. That's actually a new thing in this game. I forgot about that. I haven't even done edicts yet. What's wrong with me? Because edicts are really crucial. So edicts fund. Edicts fund in this game. It used to be that you could only do a certain number of edicts. Otherwise, if you go over that, then your empire sprawl increases nuts. Uh oh. Oh. Oh, that's awesome. That's not a thing anymore. Oh, awesome. Okay, so remember before, if you guys remember from other episodes prior, um, if you remember from episodes prior, Empire Sprawl had to be lower than your Empire Administrative Capacity. Otherwise, um, otherwise it would increase your cost for everything. But now they just removed that entirely. That's actually really good. And now it's just a general thing where the bigger your empire, the higher technology costs, the higher tradition adaptate, adoption costs. Which, for balancing measures, that's what Paradox is so frustrating with. They do all these things to balance, but they don't make sense in real life. Like, a bigger nation should not have bigger technology research costs. That literally makes no sense. It actually makes no sense. Bigger nations can research faster, but they want to avoid the snowball, so whatever. And with edicts, there's now an edicts fund. Let's look at, let's, let's look at the edicts we can do. Um... Oh, God. You've got to upkeep with Unity now. Jeez. That's bad. And you've got to upkeep with that much energy now. What the heck? That's freaking ridiculous. Oh, wait. It doesn't take away from... Oh, that's cool. Okay. Oh. Okay, so we've gone over... Why are we over the Edicts Fund? What the heck? Oh, well, whatever. Yeah, that's good enough. What can you offer us? No, we don't have that. Ooh! The consoles, the Obedin. Yeah, that's nice, honey. <laughs> Reformed Catholic, this is so based talking theology while playing video games. I'm glad you like it, my man.
It is absolutely based. I agree. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you all enjoy it as well. Which reminds me, if you believe in my mission, if you want to support my work, become a patron. You can see that in the description or buy my merch or just donate directly. Nice. Ooh, sweet. We have another archaeological site at Ashdod now. That's Construction awesome. Complete. Uh, who can research that? This guy here. Let's get... Yep, leadership experience game, that's good. Just great sight. Ruins lost forgotten. Cool. Oh, that's awesome. This is gonna get us another Voltown art artifact, likely. Um, yep, so we are right now preparing our fleets. What is our fleet power now? Still only superior. Mm. So we really, really, really need to beef up our fleets. Special project complete. Oh, alright, fleet capacity limit. Let's uh, buy more alloys. Situation lock updated. Almost out of consumer goods, of course. Star system charted. Mm. <clears throat> A lot of debate on orthodoxy in the chat. Very nice. Where did your idea of the original church come from? <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting debate. Like, what actually constitutes the church? What was the original conception? I believe the evidence is most clear that the church was fundamentally considered a rhizome, a commonwealth of independent communities, all for the same goal of Christ, <clears throat> and not a strictly central administrative body that can otherwise enforce Special things on individual other individual churches. I don't believe that was the original conception. I don't think it's... Uh, with the exception of the apostles, of course, because they were apostles, and that was recognized um, early on by, like, for example, Ignatius... And of course, energy's tanking again. Fire, what is with the economy in this latest update? It's actually retarded now. <sighs> if I have to relearn stuff now in this game, it's so gay. I don't want to re relearn. Learning's for nerds. Oh yeah, let's get rid of this. We don't need this. <clears throat> we can build a bunch more star bases now though, which is a plus. Where next? Oh, sweet. Yep. We are way over capacity for fleet. So let's build another star base somewhere. Actually, yeah, over here on this choke point, we can build. Whoa, 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 what? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, these guys joined that massive federation over here. Oh, that is not good. That is really not good. Oh no, those guys could join as well, but they're distant. Yeah, that's really not good. Okay, these guys are friendly with me, which is a plus. So they won't go to war with me as a federation, but I can't go with these guys just yet because it's going to bring in the rest of these dudes. Um, there are good ways you can strategize around it, but... Uh, so the chat is saying. <laughs> Andrew Bailey, learnings, learnings for nerds, the other poll, circa 2022. Based? Absolutely based. Panos, have you ever had to read economics? I define retardation, retardation as that in most cases. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> The other Paul, do you want to do more debates in the future? I am doing more debates in the future. I've actually scheduled with the Gospel Coalition another debate in May with complete. Craig Julia on whether church tradition is infallible, although we're going to see 
whether changing the question a little bit may be more appropriate. And in April, I actually have a debate with, we haven't fixed the exact date, but in April I have a debate with John Fisher 2.0 over whether officially sanctioned Marian devotions are contrary to the first commandment. So that's going to be a really, really good debate. I have some nice, nice ideas up my sleeve. I won't spoil them here in case John Fisher 2.0 has some spies in the chat here. Ooh, the vault of the tomb for hopeful immortals. Science officer, huge blocks, databanks, let dead aliens die. We let's download their neural patterns. Let's do that. Give us the based research. <laughs> Oh, you gotta be f What are these? Did these guys seriously just declare war on me again? The entire freaking Federation is joining him? Are you serious? What kind of a dumb Federation idea is this? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the worst case scenario that I literally did not think could happen. But it's happening. Yeah. Um. Oh boy. Oh, now these guys are at war with these guys. This would literally be the perfect time for me to take these dudes, but apparently... This is not good. Yeah, this is really, really not good. We are in survival mode now. I need to rush all my fleet power and then some to stop this. Okay, these guys are nothing compared to me. That's a plus. So are these guys. And these guys. It's mainly these guys who I'm... Oh, no, they're inferior to me as well. <laughs> but their combined fleet power could do some trouble, but... Hopefully, they won't be so cohesive as to send everything at me at once, because otherwise that would really screw me. So, I think this world... Okay. Hang on, what's their relations with these guys? Okay, they all hate each other, so they're not going to be able to go through this guy's territory. They definitely have closed borders. That's a plus. Um, yeah, so this... Pretty much looks... So, this... System here is the only choke point they can get through. Unless they find some unexplored wormhole. Are there any are there any wormholes near me that could help them out? No, no, nothing. Okay, so I'm good on that front. Yeah, should be good. So, okay, so I'm willing, if it was necessary, to let them take these systems. This is the choke point. And then this choke point and this choke point. That's why when you, in this game, when you expand, you want to expand choke point to choke point. Because in a worst case apocalyptic scenario like this, when an entire bloody federation declares war on you, which I never expected to happen. But then again, there's been, this latest update did bring AI changes. So I probably should have read up more on that. Um, this is why. So that you can establish a good staggered defense and focus all your resources in one spot. And they'll have to choke point all their forces into one spot. This is our primary choke point right here that we need to... You know You're not making trade hubs anymore. You are making... So you go to shipyard and we'll give you a gun battery. And think... Destruction field generator. And defenses. You don't even have any defensive platforms, bro. Oh, man. Okay, we need to sell a ton of stuff, buy a ton of minerals. Okay, we need to get a ton of defensive platforms up for you guys. <sighs> okay, boys and girls, this is the apocalyptic scenario. We did not want to happen. Yeah, we did not want this at all. Um, an hour and twenty. I think I'll see because I don't want to. I don't want to lose this save and then have to restart the series. That would suck. I mean, it would make more content, but it still would suck. Uh, but, and I want to get out of the mindset that I've had in a long time with playing games, which is why I can actually get a little angry, let's just say, with playing games. Like, of just, as soon as I lose one thing, then, oh, I just give up. That's a stupid mindset. I shouldn't do that. 
Um, actually, yes, when you do need to set up a war goal. What war goal will I make? Do I want to take anything, or is it just going to be purely defensive? I'm going to leave it as purely defensive, so I'm just going to leave it as humiliate. So... Okay, they've got a much stronger navy than me. They've got a way stronger navy. We just gotta hope they don't send it all at once, but with the new AI, they might frick. Um, yeah, this is not good at all. Um, if we do lose this save, hypothetically, which I don't want to do, I'm gonna fight to the death here. Then, I mean, more content. More content. Or I just restart at an older version of this save. Because what we can say, right? We can say that if we lose this then it was just another possible world, say. <laughs> this was just a possible world that went bad and we'll uh, we'll just go back to an old part of it. But I should have saved... Ah, oh, frick. Oh, well, it's... Mm. Yeah, this is not good. Um, Christian says, the other poll, did you grow up Christian? If so, what did I... I did uh, in a thoroughly Pentecostal, uh, Pentecostal um, family and denomination. That's me. Why do we have no defensive platforms on most of my most of my flipping ah? Special project complete. Ooh, sweet. Okay, the Rubricator event chain. That's good. The Rubricator is a very cool situation log updated. Very very cool device. Ah, cool. Let's get it. A relic world. Oh, okay. So this could actually be a very good world for us. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, we need the power of Yahweh on our side. Because this is not a good situation at all. If we can this drive up their war good. exhaustion enough and balance our navies a little bit more, we could go for a status quo eventually. Whoa, it's dropping a lot. Enemy presence six. Are they already at war with someone else? It actually might be. Actually, hang on. Who's at war with who? They're at war with me only. Me only. Me only. Me only. Are the problem themselves at war with someone else? No, they're not. Mm. Okay, we got our first enemy fleet here. Of course, you're already ready. Okay. Yep. You hurry up, get to that system. Because once these guys are here, I want to nuke them. I want to destroy them. If we can just hold them off for long enough, which is honestly not insanely likely if they do bring all their fleets up at once. Okay, you guys are going to jump into there. Predictable. Start digging. Yeah, take your time getting to the system, mate. Technology oh. secured. Okay, that's good. We've got extra energy now being generated. Auxiliary fire control. That's a good thing. We need that. Thoughts on Rick and Morty? Yeah, absolute cringe and gay. Just the... Uh, <laughs> look at that, we're adult humor, we're degenerate, look how funny we are, that's all it is. Literally all it is, it's, it's gay. Hurry up, hurry up. Because I want to see where these guys go next. These guys take the system, they're... Disrupted. Yep, as I predicted, they're going down to... To attack the starbase. Once they do attempt to start attacking it, then our, our ships are going to jump in and just nuke them. Oh my gosh, take your, take your sweet time getting there. Now we need to attack early. Even while our main fleet isn't getting there. <sighs> Gonna take some losses, but it should hold us on long enough. Okay, good. Okay. 
crunched, gone. See you later. library keep at it that's cool so what the comments are saying um what denom church do you currently attend a uh, baptist church uh it's a pretty 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 based one as well like not uber based but like they they keep things Vessels traditional updated. you know they don't do all these they don't they don't try to be another hill song like most other prot churches are these days oh, star hole that's good we can upgrade our star base um Okay, let's do that. Definitely upgrade you once we get the minerals. Oh, dear, this is not good. We need to really expand our economy like a ton. An absolute gigaton. We need more of, we need more energy. We need more. How are we making almost no alloys? What the heck's with this? What's with the economy now? What the heck? Hang on, hang on. Solaris 3.3 economy? What has it done to the flipping economy? have they done to the game with this latest update? What have they done? Because ships never took up that... <sighs> ships never took up all of that. Unless something happened with my... jobs. But that doesn't make any sense. What, what could be taking up my alloys? No, it's only the ships. It's literally only the ships, but apparently they're... Oh, that is ridiculous. That, no, that's so ridiculous. How the heck are they taking up that much? No, that's, no, they just ruined this game's economy. Thank you so much, Paradox, for ruining this game's economy, you absolute numpties. Paradox does that every time. They always release some update in their game like every second update maybe that just ruins things my word well on the plus side war exhaustion and navy strength is helping and you get back here reinforce the fleet Yeah, this should not be happening. That should not be that. That's a load of dog crap. Unless... Where's that cartel base? What are they doing to us? Well, they're not increasing crime right now, which is a plus, but I think... Uh, Oh, that's why. Maybe. But it wasn't like that before, so I definitely need to increase my... Yeah, I definitely need to make more... Okay, yeah, because I'm well overboard with naval capacity, so fair enough, fair enough, but I... So I definitely need to increase that. When I get enough flipping alloys. So... Yeah. <sighs> this game. Now, what's the chat? At, what's the chat happening? Was it hard for you to switch churches? Nah, not really. 
because I knew Hillsong wasn't good for me. Um, yeah. Interesting discussions we're having here. Am I the only one who feels like I'm betraying my conscience by leaving the church I grew up in, even if I have a rational reason to do so? I don't think... I mean... you got to ask, why is your conscience saying that? Does it actually have a reason for it? Or is it just, or is it just because you do have a emotional attachment to that church? Not in the negative sense, but it's like you feel a connection with them and you're leaving them and it's hard for you. But otherwise, the rational reasons are all for you leaving. If that's the case, you should try to alter your conscience, which you can do with enough um, prayer and fasting. I'm virtually entirely convinced of confessional Lutherism, but haven't made the in-person conversion yet right. Yeah, yeah, I mean... If in my position, like if I'm fully convinced of something that it is the case, it truly is the case, then I have to force my conscience to uh, work in light of that. That's just all you got to do, really. Actually, survey these ruins. That should be good. Um, let's get you building a star base here. Gosh, this latest update. After this episode, I'm going to re research the heck out of the economy in this game. And if they just changed it to just up production... Because apparently, I've seen people complain online that they just made... They just punished you even further for being a bigger empire. Which it looks like they're doing that. Because no matter how big you get, technology costs and tradition costs just increase the larger your empire is. Which is stupid. Absolutely stupid. Um, it makes sense in a role-playing sense for tradition. Because the bigger your empire, the less cohesion you'd have between all its people. But for tech, it should be the opposite. But it's because they don't want the game to be too easy, which is just... It just shows that they don't know how to make a good game that makes sense. <sighs> Making a lot of research, at least that's good. Yeah, I'm going to research the heck out of the economy. And if the changes are so bad that I just hate them, I'm going to find a way to revert my save to an older... To the, to the prior update. Because I can deal with that. Great, we've got flipping crime here now because of the dumb cartel dogs. Okay, that's good. Yep. So, if we hold out until war exhaustion gets to 100, um, and if we can just whittle down their navy a little bit more, then we can get a status quo. That'll be great for us, which will give us a 10-year reprieve from them. And then we can take these guys. Now, the weird thing is that just because these guys, this guy here, declared war on me, that dragged his entire union into it, which is ridiculous. So this union, apparently, if someone declares war on someone, everyone is forced to join it, which sucks because these guys otherwise liked me. They were, they were fine with me. They were cool with me, but now they don't like me because what's the reason? Oh, these guys are evangelizing souls, but they did like us. They did, they did like us before. Oh, well. Yeah, this game is whack sometimes. I could simply argue that God through preservation makes the institutions preserving scripture infallible in the sense that they infallibly complete. preserve the scripture without any other assertion of infallibility. So basically providence, Benjamin. That's basically what you're saying. I think it's a conflict of fear of man and hearing your mind the objections people give me. Yeah, I believe with respect to the scriptures and preservation, that's divine providence. No specific institution preserved it, but God placed out the pieces so to speak that so those efforts to preserve it were successful that's that's the difference between infallibility and providence infallibility as i understand it is innate in the thing itself whereas providence is god arranging things so that the truth comes out or whatever he wills comes out oh 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 okay here we go we got their their next boys are here so let's get you guys ready. Alright, these guys are attacking our system again, and we are going to curb stomp them. Construction complete. Jump. The worst part is that they'll just destroy our defensive stations very quickly before our fleets can even get there. Each of which costs multiple hundreds of alloys to make. Which we can't exactly upkeep well because we can only make so many minerals and we're losing a gigaton of food. What the heck is with this game? Oh my word. Far out, bruh. Ooh. 
Okay, we're whittling him down quite well. Whoa, whoa, we just knocked up their war exhaustion. Far out. That's good. Actually, really good. In fact, what we could do is even take their homeworld here. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, why not? We could take the, um... Yeah, we could take their homeworld system right now. That'll knock up their war exhaustion a ton. Heck, we, we could even claim it. Although... No, yeah, we could do that. We actually, we actually could do that. I just don't want to risk... Let me, let me save right now, just in case things go awry. Let's bring down our armies. Hmm, yeah. Uh, try every, are you an iconoclast? No, not an iconoclast. I'm all for religious use of, uh, not, not religious use. Of, uh, I'm all for images. Images are good. They're great. Even of our Lord for artistic purposes. Um, even for bringing, bringing him to mind to remind him of us. But for proper veneration of him? No, I'm totally against it. I believe that does violate the second commandment. Okay, let's take their home system. This should give them a good shock. Technology secured. Okay, so it does look like they gave one... Okay, they definitely made one good change to military in this latest update. So before, when multiple enemies attacked you, when when one empire attacks you and they have a multiple... and they have multiple um, allies, or vice versa, you attack them and they have multiple allies, the war exhaustion would include the exhaustion of all those empires, even if they're not part of the, even if they're not the central party of the war. And so it'd be impossible for you to like finish it up because you'd have to get to all these other empires elsewhere. But now, even though this guy has multiple allies, the war exhaustion is solely focused on him, which is why I'm able to drain it so quickly. That's good. Okay, that's one good change they made out of 12 bad ones in this update. Thank you. <laughs> Why is my main fleet up here? Why am I sending these two down here? Oh, weird. Well, it works. After this, I'm going to send Yehuda back up to the Menkar system. Actually, no, I'll send it to Misa system. Oops. What do I want next? Increase our society research. I'm going to get auxiliary fire control in three months. That's good. Very good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do I got here? Ah, nothing. I don't know if their other fleets are even attempting to, to help them out. <laughs> um, I will send the Yehuda fleet once they're here. No, 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 no. Yehuda, you go to Balisa. Yosef, you can stay here, Technology I guess. Technology secured. No, you flipping moron. Get back here. Stuff it, we'll claim it, why not? And then we can, oof, look at that, it's a big world. It'll definitely help us out a lot. Hmm. Okay, shields, we'll get that next. Oh yes, another tradition. Orbital bombardment damage, anger 25, war exhaustion gain. That's definitely helping us. Uh, yeah. Cool. Sweet. Nice and chill stream. I love the debates happening. Hope you guys are enjoying the gameplay, even though it's pretty stressful on my end. I mean, it's getting less and less stressful because it looks like their allies aren't even coming to help. Maybe they're just not able. But yeah, they're not coming to help by the looks of it, which is good, which is very good. Oh, they actually might be cut off. It might be this reason. <laughs> That's funny. If I finish this war very soon, these guys are still at war. Their war exhaustions are pretty high, so they might be finishing up this war relatively sooner or later. But if I can finish this war quickly, really quickly send my feats over here, and then attack here, that could be mad. That could be real pog. Nice. Okay, what's their homeworld defenses like on the ground? Big. Okay, so let's get you guys start bombarding it. Indiscriminate bombardment because they're going to be annihilated either way. 
as a species. No, no, not you. You. Go here. How powerful is my... Not powerful enough. Okay. Saba Yahweh, let's recruit more armies. This is ridiculous how much we're losing in resources. There's no reason for it. be cut off here as well. <laughs> That's so funny. So, ladies and gentlemen, we actually did have the providence of Yahweh on our side because it looks like they may actually be cut off from their allies, possibly. Not entirely sure, but either way, the allies aren't coming to help them in this war, even though we are technically at war. So, Yahweh did come through for us after all, ladies and gentlemen. Please, let's give us a, uh, you yeah. know. Benjamin, I've had plenty of Stellaris Wars where I had to carefully play around with the war exhaustion mechanics. Yeah, yeah, it's a big thing with this game. But uh, on the bright side, their fleets are frozen. They can't exactly come to attack me. I stuff it. You're, you're closer. You guys just wait here. In the middle. <clears throat> Should be able to take their home system pretty easy. Oh yeah, we got the... Yeah, sweet. We can actually inhabit the relic world now. What are we going to call this next world? What do we call it? Um, let's look up ancient Israelite city names. Ancient Israel cities. Hmm. Got Shechem. Yeah, that's another one. Oh wait, we lack alloys. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> The market's not balancing fast either. There we go. <clears throat> Another world under our belt. You guys combine with the main army. And we will soon be ready to assault. Actually, yes, you take back our system. Oh, we know, we lost an admiral. He died. Rip. And we're losing a gigaton of energy. What is with this game? Oh, we're out of food. That's partially why. Okay. And why are we losing so much darn food and energy? What the heck is up with this game's economy? Oh, you sons of... Maybe that's... I wonder if that's actually why. Why we're losing alloys. No, it can't be nice, no, because the only cost is actually the... Become clerks, you... It's actually kind of... This is actually really paying me off now. Really, really paying me off. Yeah. Far out. Okay, so the war is looking fine. It looks like we're going to curb stomp them. But... going with planetary bombardment. Lots of devastation, that's good. Their garrisons are getting weakened very nicely. Food, how do we solve the food problem? Yeah, 
geez, no wonder. How many pops we even have growing here? This game. This game is something special sometimes. Great jump slide. Tempting to blah, 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 buried underneath, which go the sooty remains of a tiny rat like creature crawling in the bottom of a stomach wash from a brand common on our rats as caught us so tiny the chest, blah, 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 corners of the galaxy. That's cool. Alright, I might call. Oh, whoa, hello, I didn't see you there. <laughs> Almost got me off guard. Well, we'll prepare to meet you in the field. Oh, we got you now. You were gonna get crushed. Okay, food's getting sold a bit more. I do not get what the heck is happening with this economy, why things are fluctuating 12,000 degrees at a time. I really don't get what's happening. I need to, I need to fix it. Maybe off camera once I'm done here, we'll fix it. Communications. Colonization in progress. How long are we going for? Almost two hours. I might give it another 10 minutes and then we'll call it. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. How can I forcefully expel branch officers? Oh, great, we've got pirates in our system now. How good. Okay, I think we're good to invade now. Yep, we're definitely sweet. Alright, let's do it. Let's land on their planet and take it. This should maybe either this or another shot give us the war exhaustion. Whoa, they definitely beefed up their navy a bit. Because the... Because the negative points from relative navy strength has gone up, so they've... Either, so probably their allies have brought up their navy size, but otherwise these guys are screwed with navy, they're, they're destroyed. I might even, might even go take them out preemptively. It's a guy world as well, how good, and we're, what the heck is with this? What the heck is going on? Why? I do not get this game with this latest update. I do not get it. I'm sorry if I my anger if my anger is just not fun to watch, but far out. What is with this? Planetary invasion commenced. I see invasion Zero G research oh, disrupted. Zero G research platform disrupted. Ground invasion force has seized the planet. All right. Yeah, definitely dealt a blow. We yeah, have this system. What in the hell is going on? I, I seriously do not get what is happening. Let's get you up here. To help out with them taking out their next system. Why is 
pop growth so pathetically slow? Oh, okay. Yeah. Shofat Gibor has died, so they're electing a new one. GG. Another victory for us very soon. Can I, what cool stuff can I talk about now to distract me from how bloody angry I am at this retarded latest update? Um, new content, yes. I've got a first series on the ideal, my first part of a series on the ideal historian, according to various authors. On, yes, coming up later. No, not later today, but on the 10th, my 10th. And that'll be, folks, that'll be looking at Lucian of Samosata, who mocked Christians in a, in a poem. <laughs> but who also wrote How to Write History, the only surviving example of historiography from antiquity. <laughs> Those guys just jumped out as soon as we came in, so they can't help. Once this war is over, I'm going to fix up my economy problems. Alright, we took their system. Secured. Great stuff. So close. Actually, what did we just research? Yes, we're star holes now. Let's get the cruiser next. Could definitely use those. Oh wait, I can barely even afford them. Why is population growth so damn slow? And my energy upkeep is going down even further. What the hell is going on? What the actual hell? Oh my word, what the hell? Whoa, okay, they're taking that. They're about to at least. But no, we're going to crush their navy. Ooh, we are really close. That should bring down their relative navy. Maybe enough so that we can finally call a status quo and win this war. Come on. They're about to, they're about to jump out of there once they finish it. Of course they are. Fucking cowards. How long are you guys going to take? Are you? Why didn't you jump? <laughs> what is wrong with this? What on earth is wrong with this? Hang on, no, 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 let's bait them, let's bait them. Bait them with one solitary fleet. And of course they don't want to attack. Yeah, I'll call it in a sec. I think, honestly, I'll be able to finish this war in this session. And if I can, then we should be all sweet. It looks like they're going to try and work up back to here, so... Should be sweet. Yeah, wow, they're definitely taking... Yeah, their war exhaustion is going nuts. <laughs> I 
and we're losing a ton of food. Great, thanks game. You're so good. I love this game so much. I absolutely adore it. I adore it so much and what it gives me in return is an absolutely dog crap economy. Okay, yep. No, they're not going for that. Interesting. Hmm. Oh, far they were exhaustion from nuts. Expanded. Well, we should be able to declare status quo very soon. Hmm. If I feel like it, I could even take that system. Why not? Freak, let's do it. <laughs> Alright, let's jump You take that. You take that. And you take that. Sweet. And now we get you to land your armies and take this world. Since they got butt all there. Actually, what kind of world is it? Is it one we can have it once we take it? Yeah, it's an ocean world. We'll be able to do that. Help out our economy. Yeah, this hasn't been the most... It's been interesting, this war. It's been... Well, the war when we finished it was great, but this war I thought was going to royally screw us, but uh, no, it's actually been a good opportunity to allow us to expand even faster than originally planned. So yeah, it's actually, if anything, it was providential. <laughs> but once this one's over, we'll be able to begin our march towards these guys. Oh, wow, they're at war with even more guys now. They're going to be screwed. <laughs> Planetary invasion commenced. Alright. Invading. Come on, disengage. And you don't. Ground invasion oh, force just... has seized a planet. GG. GG. Our economy is going to probably tank even harder once we take these worlds, but they're going to be purged quickly, so that should help us out. Oh, so close. So close, mate. Get you there. Be nice and strategic about it. And just wait for the tick. One more over, and we win. Just one more. Just one more. That's all we need. Oh. Oh, oh. They're going over to somewhere. Send offer. Will they accept in time? Got it. Bang! We got it, boys. We just took some more worlds. And now they are being... <laughs> 51 pops. Because that was their capital. This was their capital world right here, people. 51 pops being purged out of existence. Alhamdulillah. This is for... This is, for, this is because the Torah commands it, boys. We are taking the promised stars. Let's demolish all of these buildings because we do not need them. And it's going to cost us a ton to maintain. Likewise with all those districts, we are going to not need that many. You do not need as many of these as that at all. Okay, how about this world? Dang that. Build that, and build that. Um, energy grid is going to be our first priority. Okay! Ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I do remember to demolish the districts. Um, but yes, ladies and gentlemen. Um, 
<laughs> my, my economy is so screwed. Hang on, let's see the month tick over. Let's see what happens with their energy. Oh, it's not bad. Okay, we're, we're making it up. To be fair, it's possible it might not be the up games economy update, but I do genuinely suspect it is. Look at that. Our alloys have suddenly jumped through the roof again. Because ship alloy consumption has gone down? Uh, I am so confused. Okay, when we were at war, for some reason, our alloy production absolutely tanked. Maybe it's... I don't know what the game's done. I'm going to have to research more. But it's also possible the economy was kind of hampered because of some negligence on my part while we're at war. It's definitely the case, actually, because uh, every single one of our planets has a bunch of deficits, which is gay. So, yeah, and it's, but it's just population growth in this game is so damn slow. And I, th I swear it's been slowed down even further, maybe, with this update. It's so retarded. Yeah, wow. Yeah, no wonder we're losing money. Far out. Haven't even connected a bunch of trade routes yet. Watch the watch the energy spike because I connected all these trade routes. You're flipping. Oh my word! This game, this game is incredible. Well, okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are sweet. I am going to call this a game. We have. It's been interesting and bumpy, but we've achieved our goals, I guess. <laughs> it's been successful. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have to do some more reading on the game's up on the game's latest update. I don't know what's up with that. <sighs> Maybe it was just some negligence on my part. I don't know. I'm gonna do some reading. I'm gonna do some checking up stuff before next episode. But it was fun, ladies and gentlemen. Before we go. Remember to become a patron if you want to support my mission as a as a teacher to help edify the body of Christ by um, yeah bringing it about in educational contexts. You can look at the tiers with various bonuses depending on how much you give. It'll really help me out, guys. I cannot emphasize it enough. It could help make this a job, bring up production value. Um, yeah, it will just help me out. Help me out a ton. Uh, not gonna lie, not to be a pity party. Do I want to say it? It's not to sound like a pity party, but I genuinely don't. I genuinely don't know why I've been stuck in only two patrons for such a very, 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 very long time, despite my subs going up and up and up. Because I've been very industrious with content, very high in depth, and all that. Um, but if anyone has suggestions for why, um, yeah, why my patron growth is just not happening at all. Um, then yeah, I would highly, I would highly appreciate that feedback since you, the user, would have insights for why people may not be becoming patrons. Because I've done all the things that have been suggested, but maybe there's something I'm missing. I don't know, or maybe it's simply the nature of my content. It's very wide and broad, but I do try to focus it on a specific mission of edifying the body of Christ, bringing things accessible to the common man. Um, but I am trying to focus my content more. If that helps, so if it does, do give me feedback, please, making it more focused with specific themes of content over time. But otherwise, I want to address any and all theological and historical topics that I want that I think will benefit the body of Christ. That's my ultimate mission. I'm going to have a channel trailer and mission statement coming out soon, if that helps, to clarify what I'm about. Um, but yeah, you could also donate directly or buy merch. That helps you out. And of course, follow me on all my pages, particularly my alternatives like Gab and BitChute and Odyssey. And of course, join the Discord if you have not. I believe everyone here in the chat has is in the Discord, which is awesome. But if you haven't already, please do join. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you very much for watching. I hope this was a good and fun episode. I I am glad to see all the debates happening in the channel in the chat. It always happens. It's great, it's stimulating. But uh, yes, thank you all very much for coming along. I hope you all have a very lovely day, ladies and gentlemen. God bless. See you next time. Oh yes, what's happening? What's happening next? What's happening next? Before I sign out, um, what is coming up next is. Hang on, let me go to my thing. Coming up next is well, okay, my Galatians three twenty eight video, very close to being done. I'm going to be uploading that soon. Uh, very next will be March eighth. Yes, March the eighth with Christian, uh, looking at a Muslim apologetic video, <laughs> which tries to say the New Testament is corrupt by. Uh, saying that the Matthew's authorship was added later on as an example of that. It's going to be hilarious. It's not going to be too long of a stream because it's only a short video, but it's going to be 
an absolutely hilarious dunking. And then a couple days after that, I am looking at Lucian of Samosata in part one of the Ideal Historian series. So do keep on the lookout for that. And yes, Galatians 3.28 video and more content on biblical sexuality and the and the responses to egalitarianism on the way, including, I think, a series of stream lessons on uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, its context, reading, why it doesn't fit an egalitarian view, why egalitarian interpretations fail. So do keep on the lookout for that stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, that is all for now. I hope you enjoyed this episode. As frustrated as I was, my apologies if my frustrations kind of took away from the fun. But thank you all for coming along. I hope you have a lovely day or evening. God bless.